Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in FC25. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we will look at the NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we're going to go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to disactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just disactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is disactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to disactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to disactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's four gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're gonna struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, yeah, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. So now let's go back to the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, the resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So depending on your monitor, in my case, it's a 1440p monitor. So don't downscale your resolution over there. You're going to lose uh, too much quality. 
For the display mode, I really recommend to go with full screen, less input lag, more FPS. So this one is super important. For the refresh rate, it really depends on your monitor. So if you have a high refresh rate monitor, go with 120. Honestly, uh, you just have two options. That's a bit of a pain because in my case, I have a 240 hertz monitor. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Uh, and if you have a 60 hertz monitor, just select 60. So the frame rate, I always unlock my frame rate to have the lowest input lag possible. So in my case, I just go no limit. Uh, if you're playing on a laptop, sometimes it's good to lock your FPS because you have bad thermals. So for example, if you have a 60 hertz um, screen, you can lock your FPS with 60. Sometimes it's a little bit better, a little bit more input lag, but less stuttering because you don't have any thermal issue. Vertical sync, I recommend to go with off. Uh, again, less input lag. You can use other technology like G-Sync or FreeSync if you want to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. Also, right now, the game seems to have like a weird glitch that everything is locked at 30 FPS. If it does that, just go to your menu, activate V-Sync, re-desactivate it, and your FPS will go back to normal. So I don't know what's going on, but I'm pretty sure they're going to patch it. After that, dynamic resolution scale. This one I recommend to go with off. You don't want to, your, your resolution moving uh, depending on the, the amount of FPS that you need. Too much uh, noise, honestly, in the visual. For the cutscene quality, you can go full frame. You don't really care. It's not when you uh, have some gameplay. After that, it will be all your parameter that you can change when you're playing the game. So I want to mention, I'm going to show you... Uh, which one are worth, which one would provide you the most of your FPS. If you want to go full performance, of course, you're going to go everything at low. But uh, you can do some tweaking to have like a decent image quality and also a good amount of FPS. So the first one is strand based air. This one I recommend to deactivate it. You're going to get a nice four person boost. And also it's going to stabilize a lot your FPS if you're playing on the old computer. Uh, if you have a recent computer, this one should not be a problem, honestly. Rendering quality, I recommend to go with medium. You're going to gain 6% boost in your FPS. So ultra to high, you're going to gain 3%. High to medium, 3 And after that, when you go at low, honestly, it's like 1% to 2%. It's not that worth, so I recommend to go with medium. Pretty much the same thing with grass quality. You're going to gain 5% boost in your FPS. And honestly, at low, it's not very worth. You're, you're gaining like 1%, so not a huge deal over there. Crowd quality, this one is huge. I recommend to go with low. You can expect 8% boost in your FPS and it's going to stabilize a lot your FPS if you're struggling. So this one definitely go with low. Cloud quality, this one you can go at medium. You're going to gain a nice 4% boost. After that, again, I didn't see even a difference between medium and low in my FPS. So just go with medium, better quality. Ambient inclusion, this one is a bit tricky. Uh, the game looks very flat at low, but honestly, you can gain a lot of FPS. If you compare ray trace, uh, ambient inclusion versus slow, you can expect like 30% boost. So that's pretty huge, but I know a lot of people will not play ray trace. But if you compare ultra versus slow, you can expect 20, 22% boost in your FPS. My recommendation, you're not playing an FPS or something like that. It's not that bad, honestly. Just go with low and you will get a, a lot of FPS. If you're, for an example, you're looking at my guide right now, you're missing like 5 to 6 FPS to have your 60. Just move your ambient inclusion and honestly, you should be fine. The last one is blow, uh, motion blur quality. This one I recommend to go with off. Uh, you're not necessarily getting any uh, FPS, but uh, your uh, image quality will be a lot better. No like blurriness when you're moving and stuff like that. Honestly, in any game, I just recommend to deactivate motion blur, maybe except in racing game, but even in my case, I deactivate it. So this is pretty much it. So this is my guide for FC25. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.